<clears throat> me, 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 me. <laughs> what? What? What are you got, doing? I got to warm up the pipes. Get them ready to go here. Uh, in case you guys didn't notice, I have someone on the podcast today. Rich is joining me. And Hello. We're going to be talking about making marriage important. It's something we all know we should do, but we don't always get around to doing it. And this will also, I'm, we're really hoping to have time to also get to the topic of what about when my spouse is totally tuned out, or maybe they're only a taker. Sadly, of course, that is a common problem. Or maybe they are, uh, maybe you guys are separated. How do we handle it then? What should it look like? You're listening to the Practically Speaking Mom podcast. I'm Val Harrison, mom to seven. Five of them are grown and two are still at home. I'm also a mother-in-law and a grandma too. God has given me a passion for encouraging and equipping moms in this worthy journey of motherhood. For the past 20 years at parenting events and moms groups, I've been privileged to meet many mamas who are doing their best to be intentional in loving their kids, preparing them for life, and loving the Lord too. It's my honor to bring you tools for the journey every week. You can find lots more resources on my website, practicallyspeakingmom.com. That's also where you can subscribe to receive my weekly email of a blog post and podcast, all sharing the same theme for that week. Intentional Moms, let's get started with building stronger families right now. Well, happy 29th anniversary. Happy anniversary. We just got away for a weekend, and it was great, fantastic, something we should have been doing all along, and we definitely have not. It's been in the last 10 years that we started making it a priority, and honestly, I don't know if we'd done it at all before then. If we had, it was just a couple of times. Yeah, that's kind of how I remember it. What are ingredients of a good getaway? Hmm, well... Certainly, you have to kind of be able to put the responsibilities behind you. You have to be able to really disconnect from the have-tos, the urgency of everyday life, uh, whether that's making arrangements for kid responsibilities or things like that. But that's certainly a big thing. And what that does is, particularly on a on a getaway, it allows us to really... I mean, the purpose of it, of course, is to focus on our marriage, on our relationship, on nurturing uh, the things that you need and the things that I need to refill you uh, emotionally and psychologically, spiritually, all of those things, and myself as well, and connect uh, again with each other relationally. So what does that entail to connect again relationally? Well, it is so important for us to be focused on a regular basis, like even try to, on a daily basis, as many days as possible, filling each other up, you know, in, in, in ways that are effective to our spouse. So a getaway, yes, it does do that. It gives us a, you know, a deeper level of nourishing to our marriage. But hopefully, and something that all of us can improve on, is incorporating filling up our spouse and our marriage on a regular basis. And so the getaway is more like evaluating how that's going having time to talk about. Okay. So what's meaningful to you right now, you know, and what tears you down or wears you out or stresses you out or depletes you regarding our marriage, like things that I do. So it's... Or just the busyness. So it's know. it's taking the time to really evaluate more deeply like that and then get a game plan for regular ways to just create habits in us of refilling and pouring into one another. So the ingredients of a good getaway, one thing you said was being able to totally focus, set aside everything else and just focus. I'm going to say a oneness check. We're going to call it that, but how are we doing at oneness? What is holding us back from that? What are things that are maybe hurting our oneness? It could be something in me or something in you or some outside force that is really hindering us being on the same page. Not That doesn't mean that we think everything the same way, 
but it means we're committed to being a joint force in everything. Yes, and this wouldn't necessarily have to be. I mean, you don't have to go into these weekends or these getaways feeling like you have to uncover some huge stumbling block in your marriage. Uh, you know, it's just a good opportunity. If if there are those big obstacles in the way, then yes, this is a great time to uncover those and to discuss those and to figure out solutions for those. But for example, the weekend we just had, we didn't have big stuff we needed to figure out and work through. It was just a good opportunity for us to to make sure, though, to have a, a little tune-up, if you will, and, and just make sure there's uh, nothing that we're overlooking. Well, and along with that, then the next step of that is kind of getting our game plan for So what goals do we have in our marriage? What is the next step of growth we want to do? And so, you know, that can be, we want to read devotionals together more, or we want to get together for a lunch date once a month, because we don't ever do that where I come to your work. But that would be an opportunity that we could do. But anyway, whatever it is. And and I'm laughing, chuckling a moment ago, because one of ours is, we just want to learn to be more fun. (laughs) That's always like on the top of our list of how can we be better parents? Be more fun. Yes. Anyway, but but within our marriage, yeah, I guess just creativity and um, learn to be more spontaneous yeah. and just open to exciting new adventures, I guess, better than we are. Yeah. Be okay with less planned. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's another one for a good getaway ingredient is that it rejuvenates romance. <laughs> what do you yes. have to say about that? <laughs> I I don't have a lot to say. I'm not really good at it. <laughs> so it's, I don't know, it's just a chance to express, you know, some of the ways that and some of the reasons that I love you and to demonstrate uh, the way I feel. And I would say that it's best if both of the spouses put in some time to creating that, not just one of the spouses. And so this time, each of us did that. Like I scheduled the location and did some looking for some things that we were going to do. And then he planned some specifics like bringing, we don't drink, but a A a sparkling sparkling juice juice and glasses. And he had the hotel have some like chocolate covered strawberries and, you know, just little gift ideas for us to enjoy together. Right. So if both of you can contribute to that, that says to the other one, this, I value our romantic relationship as well as our partnership and as well as our commitment. Oh, another thing regarding getting away is I think the tendency that kept us from doing this in the early years, besides feeling like we had no money and we (laughs) had no one that would watch that many kids, you know, we felt like... Those things, I think a big part of whether it was daily basis stuff or whether it was these getaways, either way, I was guilty of having a mindset of, you know, we're good. We can wait. Investing in our marriage can wait because our marriage is fine. Right. And that was a huge mistake it, Yes, that we, you know, woke up one day and we're like, I mean, not literally woke up. We the realized. Eye, yeah, we realized one day our eyes were finally seeing that our marriage is not okay. We are not okay. And we have big problems. So I think a big contributing factor was that false belief that, you know, our marriage is good. It can wait because our kids need us right now. Well, our kids need us to have a strong marriage. That's yes. what, that's what our kids need. So now let's get back to what you had brought up earlier. How do we make our marriage a priority on a daily or or regular basis? Or how do we keep it a priority? There's kind of three ways that we have to do that. One is with our time. One is with our resources, which could mean money. You know, that's, that's part of it. Like we can have dates for free or set aside time for free. But it's not wrong to invest financially in our marriage also. Absolutely. And then the third way is in our focus. Like, 
uh, having part of our habits and our routine times of focus in on one another. So time, resources, and focus. Okay. That uh, as in our attention, focusing our attention. Right. But what else? Well, I don't know that it's a what else, but taking some of those ideas and getting specific with that is you and I discussed, we drive ourselves pretty consistently to be busy most of our day. So we talked about one thing that we need to do is every evening, 830, shut down the to-do list and just go into the living room, sit down, you and I together, do some reading, read the Bible, talk with each other. And if the kids, I mean... At a minimum, that shows the kids that we are prioritizing our marriage and one another. It also, you know, we can set the environment with them that it's okay to come and talk with us at those times together as a couple. You know, our daughters, the two who are left at home, will from time to time, they have questions and they, you know, they've they've got, hey, I'm dealing with this friend situation or social situation at church and I would like a little bit of guidance on it, or this is just how I'm feeling about it or whatever. And sometimes we just listen and sometimes we give guidance. And, you know, that could be an opportunity for something like that. Or our youngest daughter comes to us with questions that she's just kind of pondered, philosophical sometimes, or sometimes not so much. And, but it's just an opportunity for us to shut down the to-do list and really connect as a couple, as a family. And I would say that almost every time that we go in at that time and sit in the living room together, the kids come in. <laughs> they do. I mean, I, I think that they long for those kind of, you know, this time slot is open for anything you need to talk to us about. And we've told them that that's why we're in there at those times. So anyway, I think that we just need to do more of that. Definitely. Now, that is different than a different time slot that if any of you have read any books by the Ezos, Gary and Anne Marie Ezo, they talk about something called couch time, where when the spouse that works away, which is usually dad, gets home, that the two of you take, you know, five, 10 minutes sitting down to debrief, basically, you know, this is how our day has gone so far. This is where we're at with things. This kid got in trouble a whole bunch and maybe be aware of that so that you don't contribute to getting them in trouble more. You know, maybe they, they've kind of had their fill for how much they can take in one day. Right. Exasperation. Right. Or maybe the opposite. Maybe this one has really been having issues today and honestly, it's time to deal with them. And so that needs to happen this evening. Or it could be or me I've saying ha- I'm exhausted right. or that you've had a terrible day yep. and that we need to be considerate of that of each other. So that is like a debriefing session that honestly, even if we weren't a married couple, but we're just two people in charge of major projects, we need to have these times of getting on the same page and updating one another. So We can't think that that kind of thing, that that kind of interaction is filling our marriage because it's not. That's just partnering in life. To a degree. Now, there is some element in there that is, you know, when I know where you're at, I know how to give you what you need because I value you. I know how better to give you what you need. You know how better to give me what I need. So that's that's part of it. But you're right. A lot of that is largely logistical and administrative. Yeah. Okay, so on this issue still, (laughs) we're bouncing around a lot today, but hopefully you guys can follow us. How do we keep, maintain, or make our marriage a priority? Another thing that we said on that list was boundaries. The boundaries that we establish together show how much we value this relationship. Yes, so I think we've mentioned on here before that uh, we have put boundaries in place for our work relationships, the interactions that we have with others outside of our family and how we handle those and what our guidelines are, what our borders are, what lines will we not cross in order to safeguard our emotions in a way that preserves our real emotional needs being filled in our marriage instead of other places, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's add to this list of ways that we are keeping our marriage a priority. There's one book that we read that talked about 
find meaningful ways on a regular basis to restate our commitment to one another. So what would be the basic parts of our marriage commitment to each other? Well, if you think about the vows, the wedding vows, it is basically saying you are the one and only for me forever to have and to hold from this day forward until death do us part. Uh, no matter what, there's the in sickness and health and richer and poorer. So it, you're the only one for me, no matter what, forever. So we've displayed you're the only one forever, no matter what. One way is by never joking about or putting on the table the option of divorce. Right. We don't joke about practice marriage or next spouse, nothing like that, that even implies divorce. Yeah, so our society in general has just made marriage so cheap. And for the stability of our kids, for our relationships with God, and for really having an incredible marriage, we have to put boundaries around the sacredness of our marriage. And so identifying ways that you can do that. And that is, you know, we mentioned these commitments that come from the wedding vows. And so the idea there is to, on a regular basis, every day, you know, every couple of days, pretty routinely, finding some way to express those commitments, those those three pieces of that commitment. You don't have to formally re-recite your vows, you know. I take thee to be my wedded wife, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> of course not. But somehow, hey, you know what, babe? You're my my one and only forever. And no matter what happens, we're, we've got this. We're in this together. So just something like that every so often, routinely. So let's just for a second look at the mom who finds herself in a situation where her husband is either totally tuned out or is a taker. So she gives and gives and gives. He just takes and takes and takes. And there's never that reciprocation or very seldom the reciprocation. What about that mom? Or maybe they're even separated, for example. So what about that mom? How should this look for her? So we talked about this in preparation for this episode. And we talked about that, you know, that of course, is a tremendous emotional drain. And so there has to be some emotional and possibly even physical uh, protection put in place there. But aside from that, then there is still this moral and intellectual commitment to these three pieces of the vows that you are still the only one for me forever, no matter what, even if emotionally that connection is not there right now and I have to protect myself emotionally. So it makes me think of that song. One of your, well, your favorite music artist is Andrew Peterson. And he has this song where he talks about this love that he has and the commitment that he's made. I'm going to love you what is, what is that line from? I think you're you're thinking of uh, I don't I don't need her love to love her all I can. So that concept of I am going to love and be committed to you forever, no matter what. You're the only one. We can have that even if we have to put up some emotional and physical boundaries at times in extreme situations and. I'm sure you may listen to our marriage and be thinking, oh, that is so easy for you guys to say. I mean, he's so clearly, Rich is so caring and, you know, willing to be all in emotionally and and all that. But what you see, the picture you see of our marriage now is not what it has always been. And God allowed us to go through a time where we had this choice to make. And I just want to tell you that on the other side of it, God redeemed. And I don't believe that that redemption would have happened if either of us would have thrown in the towel. But we're clearly not saying to not have physical or emotional boundaries. For your own protection and safety. Sometimes that's... Whatever that looks like, whatever that needs to look like. So I hope that will be helpful to you. And I know life is crazy and fitting any of these things into the boxes that we're talking about is pretty hard to do. 
married parenting life is complex <laughs> and, and busy and busy and and overwhelming and tiring and we get it but hopefully you can still glean some goals to some things to work towards from this conversation that we had so thanks for joining me on the podcast rich Glad and to. in case you guys don't know if you haven't been listening for a long time, you might not know that Rich edits and produces all of these episodes. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Rich, for doing that. We're definitely a partnership in this ministry. Absolutely, and it's really fulfilling and a joy for me to do it as well. We're learning a different perspective. We're turning our struggles from different directions. Into striving together. Now we're striving together for more than we could have been on our own before. Still you, still me, with a new entity of one.